Hello to a new video about risk assessment. This time we are talking about a specific video about risk assessment. We are talking about the method performance level or PL. Okay? So at the performance level is a certain way of how to do risk assessment. I just want to make a short introduction how this is working that you have an idea what are or what we do. There too is a two-step approach. This is very common. Yeah? So on one hand, I need to, to uh, see what 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 I need. Yeah? On the other hand, so there is a one performance level which I need. On the other hand, is if I have to construct the machine like this, yeah, what performance level to reach? And the reach performance level must be higher than the one I need. High or equal. That's the that's the rule. Huh? So how do we get to the needed performance level? So first of all, you have a look into the severeness of the injury, of the possible injuries. Huh? So there are minor injuries huh? and there are major injuries. The diversion is a minor injury can heal. Uh, it's a cut or something like this. It will heal. Everything is fine again. Yeah? A major injury is not reversible. A major injury, you have lost something. You have lost a finger, you have lost... It's, it's not reversible. Yeah? So, there is this category S1. Yeah? These are minor injuries. And S2, so major. major injuries. Yeah? That's one thing to distinguish. Yeah? So we have a certain starting point and that's the first thing we have to decide if the expected injury is major or minor. Yeah? S1 minor, S2 major, major injury. Okay? Once this is settled, yeah, we can talk about uh, the frequency. How often is this applying? Yeah? Is this very often? Yeah? So like sometimes in an hour? Yeah? Or is this on rare occasion like only during during uh, maintenance or something like this? Yeah? So this is then the frequency. So there is F1 means only on rare occasions. And F2 is quite frequent. Very frequent. So this is the second thing of how to decide. Second level. F1, F2. F1, F2. And now we are looking into, yeah, if this is really happening, yeah, is it easy to escape or is it simply impossible? Yeah? So how easy is it to escape from the danger? Yeah? Is it you see the danger and can just move aside and this is very easy? Yeah? Or is it simply impossible to escape? Yeah? Is it simply, yeah, if you see it, it's already too late. Okay. So the probability of escaping. So there's P1. It's likely to escape. It's, or easy. Easy to escape the danger. P2. Hard to impossible. To escape. Then it's the next stage. P1, P2, P1, P2, P1, P2, P1, guess what? P2. Okay. And now 
we have reached our performance level. Yeah? Because here we can read now the necessary performance level. Yeah? Now we're falling into categories. This is A, B, C, D, E. This is the necessary performance level. This level I have to reach with my construction. Okay? That's it. So now I know what I need. How do I get what I what I have? There are some, some things which uh, will influence how, in which performance level my construction will be or will which performance level I can reach with my construction. Yeah? There are three things which are which have influence. Yeah? There's on one hand there's the architecture, security architecture. Within the standard, there are defined uh, five levels, yeah, five categories. Yeah, the category B, yeah, this is simply no security architecture. Yeah, just cover the function. Yeah. And then there is the category 1, 2, 3 and 4. And 4 basically means full security architecture. Everything is done double and double. And, and every command is double checked and cross references and so on. This is full security architecture. What the security architecture means, we will see in later videos. B simply means just cover the function and not care about and hope for the best. <laughs> security architecture. That's one thing which will have influence. Okay? A second thing which will have influence is the mean time to failure. mean time to failure. So the components I use in my construction, yeah, they always have a lifespan. There is always given a mean time to failure. This means it's the average time it needs yeah, that an element is failing. Yeah? And there are the categories low. Yeah? This means it's the mean time to failure is somewhere between 3 and 10 years. Yeah? Then there is the category medium. medium. This means somewhere between 20, 10 and 30 years. And then there's the category high, of course. This means above 30 years. So 30 to usually 100 years. Basically means built for eternity. <laughs> Meantime to failure. Okay? Second thing which has influence on our achieved performance level. And third thing which has influence is the so-called uh, the diagnose co covery, coverage. Diagnose coverage means is my construction or my control system or whatever able to see critical failures yeah? and how many percent of the critical failures can be can be seen or can be can be determined by the system itself yeah? so a self diagnosis of the system yeah? diagnose coverage yeah? how many critical failures of my construction can be diagnosed by the system itself Okay, so there are four levels, there are none, there is none. No coverage, coverage at all means lower than 60%. Yeah? So DTC is lower than 60%. Only 60% or less of the critical failures are, are diagnosed by the system itself. Yeah? Then there is low. This means the DC is of course above 60%. But lower than 90. 90%. Yeah? 
that 90% of all critical failures are <laughs> not 90%, then we are still at low. <laughs> Medium means DC is smaller than 99%. 99%. So if we are if we only discover 99, less than 99% of all critical errors ourselves, we are in category medium. And then there is high. This means DC is bigger or equal 99%. This means practically all errors, uh, critical errors, can be seen by the system itself. That's the diagnose coverage. And depending on the combination of those things, I can reach a performance level. Yeah? So there's a performance level graph also. Yeah? It looks a little bit like this. Don't take this drawing off a granite. There is the drawing in the standard, of course. Yeah? On the x-axis, I have usually the categories. Yeah? So there's the category B. There's the category 1, there's the category 2, there are even two twos, then there are two category 3, and now there's a big thing, usually this would be the same, category 4. So this is, this is B, category B, no security architecture. This is category 1, minor security things, then we have category 2, then we have category 3, and then we have category 4. Why there's 2? So this DC here is none. Also here it's none. Here we have DC low and DC medium. Here we have DC low and DC medium. And here we have DC high. Okay. And on the other hand, we have the performance levels A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. This is how this looks like. Okay. So the category and the DC are the x axis, and now where is the mean time to failure? Yeah. Uh, which color do I use? I will use black one, orange one and red one, a green one. Ah, does not really matter. Black one. So if there is, usually looks like this, no security architecture. Here we do have low mean time to failure. Okay. Here we have medium mean time to failure. And high mean time to failure does not really make sense because then usually I have security one yeah? and then I can even reach up to performance level three RC. This would mean security high. This is always here 30 years, this is 100 years. Yeah? And this is 10 years, this is 3 years. That's the limits of the bars. Yeah? So this is how this looks like. Yeah? With, in category 2, I can cover quite a lot of parts. Yeah? Looking like this usually. Category 3, or, ooh, much too far. Looking like this, no, like this. Three, looking somehow like this. To make it 
easy, I will simply draw those things. Okay. This is how usually this looks like. Green, right here. You see, the mean time between failure to failure, it has a huge impact simply. Here is 3 years, here is 100 years. And we also see, if we have to reach performance level E, we really have to spend quite some amount into security architecture, because we cannot reach this with architecture 2 and it's hard to reach with 3, so we really have to think about security. Yeah? Performance level E means yeah, there are major injuries which are practically all around, all the time, yeah, in danger, and you cannot escape. Yeah? So then this must be really high. It's clear. Yeah? And you know, performance level A, you see, you can reach it even without security and, and you can reach it. Yeah? Because what means A means A only minor in injuries can occur yeah? and those minor injuries are very unlikely to happen and even if this is happening it's easy to escape. I mean yeah, so and this is the reach performance level here. And the reach performance level has to be, of course, bigger or equal to the necessary performance level. Okay? This is how this is working. Okay? So, necessary performance level according to the injuries, the frequency and the likelihood to escape. And reach performance level according to the security architecture, the mean time to failure and the diagnosis coverage. Yeah, security then into this graph and compare. This is risk assessment according to performance level. Okay. Next time we're talking about the security integrity level. Okay. What this means, it works pretty pretty similar but different. Same but different. Okay. We'll be then in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.